The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Welcome to a brother, my brother, I mean advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, the real Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet, sweet baby brother, sweet ass baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Uh, now, I have never had any doubts about the validity of your identity, Travis. Why did you feel the need to clarify that you were the real Travis McElroy? Well, Justin, I am a grade A, stamped, approved, real. American, verified by Twitter, Travis McElroy. My life has really turned a corner. Uh, I got that blue check mark. Twitter has verified me. Um, uh, uh, Everything's changed. Everything's changed. So from, from the way I understand it, you literally woke up, and it was like any other day. It, yep. was like, it was like like any other day. Maybe you could tell me there's like a, a sweet smell in the air, the sweet smell of honeysuckles, and you're like, mm, something's changed. The sun was a little brighter. Well, that's just global um, warming. The birds were a little just better. Okay. I, uh, I think it's funny because there's been a big social media push recently. Mm-hmm. Trav, do you know any of the ringleaders of that who are trying to get you verified? Um, uh, the, uh, there's a change.org petition. That was Anna Giles. Um, that was a, a huge part of it, I assume. But I also, um, I also think it was just like my friends Kanye and Kim, a different Kanye and Kim, not the, not the famous ones. Yeah, um, Kanye, Kanye Mendelson, your friend that works at Twitter. Yeah, and he was pushing really hard. Uh, Dave helped me out. Um, just not a specific Dave, mind you, just like uh, the general idea All of Dave. Dave. Yeah. Um, I do just want to point out Twitter, your verification process. It sounds really cool considering that it, it needed no feedback from Travis whatsoever. You're just like, yeah, yep. that thug seems real. Click, flipped it on. He's real. As- I know. Oh, I did. Oh, this is what oh, they do. They go around in a circle. They say, anybody know Travis? And so he says, oh, I know Travis. He's real as hell. And I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me here because I'm very excited to be verified, but I didn't receive an email or a notification or even like a tweet from what Twitter. Would be the, what would be the utility of telling you that you're Travis McElroy? I guess that's true, but like I only found it out because uh, somebody who like follows all verified accounts was like, congratulations on your verification. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> cool, cool, awesome. I had a huge, like I was going to throw a party. I was going to make a banner. I was going to do a big champagne toast. And that was all taken away from me because I didn't get any forward by, by uh, fucking, knowledge of it. By the official Wendy's Twitter account. It was like, what's up, yeah. Travis? Welcome to the club. Welcome to the squad. Free Wendy's but for I'm, life. Uh, the confidence that I've gained alone, not not to mention like the immense amount of power and benefits that come from being You've verified, beca- but the confidence yeah. alone has been a game changer. You become a sort of vessel for the hopes and dreams of people. Yeah. yeah. You are the orphan Annie of of, of us. Yes. You are I- like, the sun will come out tomorrow because I have a blue check mark. I'm like a folk hero of Twitter because they're like, he's not one of the rich ones. He is not a tastemaker. He's yeah. not a powerful person. And yet he is still verified. How did he right. get there? Is he a journalist? Does he work for some big company? No. Um, he talks into no. a microphone seven days a week because he's a dummy. Is, it, is an inspiring reminder that literally anybody. Any yeah. old jag. Anyone. Anybody. Any fool. Anybody with like two brain cells to rub together can um, get verified. Now, Travis, you give me the confidence I need to pursue my live stream. Now that I've seen you accomplish yours with ease, um, you're going to see me accomplish my live stream, which is to destroy Twitter from the inside out, to yeah. eat away at it from inside like a di- like a disease. We have a lot of people who work at the trades listening to this podcast right now. What can we expect from Travis's new? checkmarked Twitter account. What can we expect? Maybe like more 
um, like brand evangelism, some as some oh, advertorials for like craft macaroni and cheese. I've already been talking about Kroger. I've been talking about Nylabone. They're they're followers of mine. I'm not going to take my foot off the gas as far as weird, funny tweets at 11:59 just before I fall asleep will go. You know, Nylabone. you're going to see like three, four times what I've already been doing. Nylabone is launching a men's fashion line, and they are having mm-hmm. a hard time getting that ball rolling down the old hill. But here comes Travis, and he's wearing a Nylabone dicky, which yep. is their sort of their uh, flagship product. Um, and he looks fucking great. And you you don't know whether or not to trust this this Nylabone um, shill. But then you look at that blue check mark and everything's okay. So, Travis, do you think when you tweeted, serious question, shouldn't it be Games of Throne? You think people at Twitter were like, mm, yes. We've done a great yeah. job on that one. <laughs> this doing, is a taste maker. They're doing good work here. This, is a, this has been Travis's tweet review. Let's just actually do a, Justin, if you and I want to do a comprehensive audit real quick. Yeah. Um just see what uh verified Travis is up to. I know. I've I've been a little bit on fire for the last couple of days. So you go right ahead. I'm pretty proud of some A lot of tweets, tweets about Gallivant on ABC. Lots of wow, I'm lots big of, fan wow, of Gallivant. Wow, lots of wow, lots of wow, lots of tweets about Gallivant, Travi. <laughs> You're one stop shop. It's a little bit up in the air, Griffin, and I uh I'm unpaid, a huge proponent of Gallivant. I want people to watch it. I want people to go on Twitter, tweet at ABC and say, hey, more Gallivant, please. Thank you very much. I do appreciate you uh, tweeting with Ashley Burge and Anthony Carboni about how great Monster Factory is. I'm that, trying to get the word out. A, I want to use my power and influence to build up my tiny, tiny brother's careers. You know what I mean? Do you, do you feel an impetus, Travis, now that you're the real Travis McElroy? Do you think that, that maybe is a, a point of meditation for you that like you always have to be bringing it real 100 percent no games you know know, it's actually the opposite justin because i remember being in college and trying to figure out who i was and i was like what what are the things i like versus the things i think i like because other people like it and now twitter has basically said you are you don't worry about it anymore so now they've yeah they've kind of let me off the chain because i know now i am travis mcelroy yeah i have self-actualized you yes i am the most travis mcelroy i could be everything i'm doing is right yeah i never um, sure. in fact i should be doing more of what i'm already doing there's um i want to dive into just a subject that's important to me real fast if i can i know this has been a very travis centric intro but i'd like to talk just more broadly about the whole sort of mcelroy universe um you tweeted on april 29th post verification i'm assuming um there's no subject i'm more afraid to talk about on twitter than at scott bacula his fans can be uh-huh. very intimidating and then you got a response um <laughs> from I mean, and i don't think we should say her na- her no, her handle because i, I don't want to though i will say I she is known is. in the community she this this user said that's because they are more intelligent than you uh which you retweeted which like i guess is fine um and, and i looked and i realized that i had this person blocked and i realized this because i've tweeted about scott Bakula before and this person has come down on me like a flock of, like a murder of crows it's amazing. It's amazing. It's really good. If you if you mention Scott Bakula, this person will respond. Is it a bot? Even is it a like, bot? This this no. fucking Scott Bakula Kingsguard? No, is this no a- because that they drop in out of nowhere and they will put you on blast and it's but like a specific blast. Like even if you're like Scott Bakula is the most amazing actor on the planet. I love him so much. They'll come back like fuck you. You have no fuck idea what you, you're idiot. talking about. You're like cool, cool, cool. This is like highly targeted. No, it is like no, it is highly targeted. And I know on- that it's real because when I tweeted that thing about being intimidated by the fans, a bunch of people responded, "Don't listen to blank. They are the worst. Even we in the community don't like them." So like this is just an outlier rogue Scott Bakula fan. Don't track this person down and tweet at them, by the way. I do Please not don't. want them to change this game. Yeah. I love this game. I'm sad I blocked them. I'm going to unblock them right now, honestly. Yeah, that's I why I retweeted it, because I actually, I respect the avarice. I respect can, the Can commitment. the three of us adopt a highway, so to speak, and each pick a celeb, and then just fought, like add a column on tweet deck, and anytime fucking anybody talks about them, we swoop in like Batman, like, hey, moron and just like give it to him raw uh i think somebody said we're idiot like uh somebody said why won't you go 
<laughs> they tweeted at Scott to say, why won't you go on the show? Still, please don't do that again. Thanks. Thank you, please. And- I had a lot of that. Had a lot of that after the last episode. Thanks, gang. Love your fervor, but let's bottle that one, that particular channel of it up. We we have we have channels and we've got people to contact. Thank you very much. Uh, None of them and, will and work, mind someone you. Someone swooped on the on them and said, it's because they're idiot man children. It's like, whoa, he just <laughs> came out of nowhere with that. All right, let's I pick them. Let's pick them. Let's do a quick draft for our Adopt okay. a Highway project. Oh, this is tough. I know, it's really tough. It can't be somebody, it can't be like fucking Brad Pitt, because that's your, that's your, yeah. Yeah, that's your whole life. And it can't be anybody, I, I was going to say like a David Tennant, but I feel like there's already Too busy, too busy. Are you kidding me on the fucking internet? That's where David yeah. Tennant, David Tennant basically lives on the internet. He's basically like that movie Transcendence. Should we pick other Huntingtonians? Should we do this for like Brad Dorif and Michael Cerferis? Like- where we could, if somebody tweets or at one Subi of them, sales. Just, when people tweet or, at Subi sales, we can defend him. Like, how dare you? Um, I like that. I like locking down the H H Town game. I've met Michael Service, and I would feel weird, like, because if I ever see him again, he'll be like, "Oh, you're my weird Twitter Kingsguard," and I'll have to be <laughs> like, "Yeah, that's that's yeah. me. I'm sorry. It that's seemed same. like you. I thought you liked it and wanted it. I've got mine. I've got mine. Okay, hit it. Carrie OS. Oh. Yeah, I think you're going to have a little bit of competition on that front if you want to be the person that leaps to his defense. But I feel pretty confident. I'm a big fan. Yeah. And okay, yes. I feel like you say the name, people know the name. He's got name recognition. Yeah. But I don't feel like there's already like a lot. I Okay, I would have some competition, but I think I could nudge my way to the front thanks to a little blue check mark. Uh, uh, <laughs> Why is this verified person so defensive of me? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Justin. I'm getting through every filter on the planet. All right, Travis, I haven't until now, but I am ne- to see if you actually follow through this. I am going to start following you just to see if you actually make good on this. I'm glad that I finally earned your follow. Okay, listen, this is an advice. Hold on, I, you don't want to know who I picked? Yeah, who do you pick, Griffin? I'm putting up my tweet announcement of who I picked right now, um, but I've decided to just go ahead and uh, do Scott Bakula. Because here's the thing. <laughs> this this mean, mean, mean woman is doing a, a poor job. She's got a fucking itchy trigger finger. And I feel like this, yeah. is, this is more indicative of her wanting to say mean things to people on the internet, and Scott Bakula is just like the the vehicle the the hearty tostito chip that carries her hate salsa. Um, I don't. I I, I homie don't play that shit. He needs a better he needs a better class of of defender. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh I think that that's an excellent choice. Okay. This is an advice show. Justin, for the you're not gonna era. pick one? You're just gonna skirt the whole discussion? I don't want to commit myself to it because then I don't want people tweeting about me saying, like, hey, your boy uh 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 Peter Stormare is under fire again. Maybe you need to like get in there and help help take him down well i think you just threw your hat over the fence i think you just committed. here's <laughs> here's the three okay listen listen i'm just gonna say this real quick there is an at brad Dorif twitter account it has three tweets they're from 2009 and 2010 respectively uh these are the tweets i gave mr Dorf's rep the info twitter balls in his court now next tweet mr Dorf is still not using this twitter account sad music i thought he his publicist would use it for updates maybe someday <laughs> Third tweet, looks around, takes a broom, sweeps out dust and cobwebs. This place feels a little empty. Only one person can make this place a home. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. They set up a little, like, Brad Dorf uh, 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 exoskeleton, and they're just waiting for him to hop inside and take control. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I literally just added a Scott back to the column on tweet deck, and I'm going to be watching it during the show just for any fucking <laughs> anybody who steps. Because here's the thing. I feel like we need this, this is volume two now, right? We need new segments, and I feel like we should endeavor everything that we do, every question that we do. We just like we 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 try to make a segment out of it, and maybe a new segment is like Bacula Defense Force. I'm I'm tweeting right now about my love of carry always. All right, well let's maybe let's we should all close Twitter and do some advice. Yeah, I think that that sounds good to me. I'll pick somebody. Uh, Peter Stormare seems good. Like, but I don't think Peter Stormare needs me. You know what I mean? Not like Peter Scott. St- not like Scott Bakula needs me. Has to have me. Has to. Have. Pe- oh, Griffin, I must have him. Uh, while taking a small road trip to Chicago with my girlfriend, we pulled off into a rest stop to switch off driving. 
While there, I decided to buy a bottle of water from a vending machine. To my surprise, there was a cold bottle of water in the bottom of the vending machine, just sitting there. I took the water, but now that I have it, I'm afraid it could be poisoned. Should I trust this mysterious bottle of water from a dirty old Indiana rest stop or throw it out the goddamn window? That's from Water Weary Wanderer. I cannot imagine that they are still waiting on an answer to this question. Yeah, especially since <laughs> Travis sent this email 14 hours ago. So, yeah. um, okay, what would you guys do in this in this scenario? I don't think I'd drink it. Oh, don't I think don't know. I think I, I would. I think that if I was like, oh, I'm gonna pay a dollar seventy five or whatever for the Sony, and then there. <laughs> In the tray is the Dasani. Is the Dasani I you want? I would be like, oh, swoop. Um, I feel like, I feel like a true adulthood, or maybe it's not even adulthood, but like you, re- you reach a point in your life of financial stability where the zero point zero 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 one percent chance that you'll drink something that will kill you no longer becomes worth saving a dollar. Yeah, yeah, but like that doesn't like okay, it just doesn't make sense to me. That if you're gonna th- go through the trouble of poisoning something, mm-hmm. why would you set a honey pot by which, like, the person probably would be inclined not to drink it? You know what I mean? Like, if you wanted to put a poison bottle of water somewhere, it seems like you would put it in a a refrigerator at like a speedway or something, something that people would actually like drink. Not like you're not. Why are you just trying to poison? Well, two hold people, on, Justin. You're question. thinking too much about like the physical poisoning. What about like a curse or? Yeah, the curse is what I was thinking of. Also, yeah, something more along the lines of like they have not physically altered the makeup of this Dasani at all. Except if you're the one who takes it, maybe you'll be thirsty forever. Well, we are all going to be thirsty for like that's. I hope no, so. I mean a, like no amount of liquid, no amount of beverage could Unslakeable. Unslakeable. Yes, unslakeable, thank you. That would be the name of the movie, Unslakeable. Unslakeable. I'm glad that um, we've pivoted away from poisoning advice, which is what we were oh boys, we were really dangerously teetering on the edge of becoming a let poison. Let me tell you how show. I'd kill a stranger at a speedway. How <laughs> to get away with cursing water. <laughs> I bet if you could market cursed water, it would sell really fucking well. I don't know why you would curse. Okay, the thing about a curse is that in order for it to work, Mm. there has to be a sort of like a sacrifice, an an like an irony behind. Oh, I see. You have to. There's a re. Okay, if you take a bottle of water out of the vending machine that's already in the vending machine, you don't pay your money. You're just like doing what's best for the environment. You're not throwing that in a landfill. Why should you be punished for that? You know what I mean? Like if there was a a a, a like a, a table and on it it said like for service dogs only, and you went over and just like drained it, right? Then I could see where you would be punished for that karmically. Yes. And you'd wake up being a service dog the next day. You'd wake up as a service dog, Shaggy, DA. And two. then, like, the, the the evil wizard would show up and say, I said it was for service dogs only. <laughs> and then Tim Allen's, like, w- Tim Allen's like, when the fuck am I going to learn my lesson? When am I going to learn my lesson? <laughs> I've got to dial it in. I know. I'm going to eat this cursed milk and cookies. Oh, shit. Santa Claus shit. 4, dog to Santa, yeah. kickflip. Santa Paw. Wait, that's already a thing. Santa yeah, Paw. It's like that too. time when he's. You know how the first the first one starts with Santa dying and Tim Allen stealing his clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chili. And, that and he's saying like, Santa. "Oh, I like these boots." And it's like, "Oh God, I think I'll take these for myself." I didn't think that the scene of Tim Allen stripping Santa's corpse needed to last for ten minutes. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was like bold or that film. We, and and two of those minutes were just a close up on his. Slowly engorging hog. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 wild hog. His and wild, wild, it starts the off long, long scene of him digging a shallow grave in his backyard as he laughed, covered in blood. Was I didn't think it was appropriate for a kids movie, but no one his, mentioned it in any and, of their critiques. And his hog just fluctuated between different yeah. states of firmness. as he laughed, as he laughed. It was like, and, ha, 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 but then he got ha, really, ha. then he got really chubby and grew a big beard. 
Mm-hmm. And then we um, all had raging hogs. And we, I think yeah. your problem was going to drink water anyway. What's water going to do? Nothing. Yeah, that's it. If I'm going to try and poison a fool with a, a vending machine honey pot, you know I'm going to put some fruitopia down there, not some water. Because if you oh, even I'm if you walk up to monster. that machine expecting to, if even if you walk up to that machine expecting to get some water and you see a free fruitopia waiting for you, uh, my plans have just shifted in a wonderful new direction. The like that H E B water you like so much, Griffin. What if they put that down there? Um, I've recently learned that it's being discontinued, and I really don't want to fucking get into it right now. Okay, sorry. Do you guys sorry. want a Yahoo? Uh, I'd like that. Thank you. This Yahoo was sent in by Aaron Keys. By the way, is there anything in that question that we could turn into a new segment? Maybe like Travis's curses or. No. Aaron Key sent this in. Thank you, Aaron. It's by Yahoo Answers user Darius, who asks, I want to be an explosive dunker, but I'm skinny and can do a basic two-hand dunk. I'm 6'6 already and 16. I want to be able to catch oops, Mm -hmm. which is, I believe, a shorthand for hoops jams. I think it's short for Alex oops. Uh, that would be a great basketball name. You know how like basketball players when they get like super super famous, they can like change their name to cool sounding shit like Larry Bird. You think yeah. that was really his he name? Flies like, like a bird because he flies like a bird when he puts those dunks in the rim. Mm-hmm. Um, explosive dunks, little little on the skinny side. I don't think that matters so much. You got the six, but he's six got the height. You got the height is going to be good. Um, how can you? How can you? How can you learn to catch? Oops, because I've always thought of that as being like sort of bred into a child. What you need is you need a oops partner who is both taller and better at basketball than you. Yeah, I guess so that's a, I guess that's a that's a good point, Travis. A, a good oops is a, like a contract of trust yeah. between two people. And ideally, what you want is for them to already be making the shot, and you're just barely touching the ball and then you take all the credit <laughs> i was the uh scorekeeper you a received trophy a trophy for, for that didn't you a trophy for that and everything <laughs> yeah um and so what did you learn from your time watching the, the yeah people like you would paint? be the best if i dunk every day then I'll, i only know how i dunk as the scorekeeper the scorekeeper might arguably be the best basketball player on the whole court because they have to watch like a hawk and see every dunk that everybody does that's you, why I, I try to tell people that i was the best one out there and you spent 10,000 hours as the scorekeeper, right? So you became like a basketball expert. Sort of a basketball expert. You know, I tried to jo- I I got so into that groove, I tried to join the wrestling team as a manager. And um, <laughs> it was me. And at the time to sign up for it, it was me and seven girls. And one of the girls said that that job was only for girls. And that I wow. should destroy the wrestling Wow, sexism team. is yeah. alive in America. I know, right? Finally, this fucking fox. I, this fucking fox catcher too. Yeah, I was. I was told that I was because of my gender. I was not going to fill that role, and I was like, I get it. You know, for so too long, time, men have suffered under the thumb of the matriarchy. Right. So when people talk about like the glass ceiling, for example, and they say it's something that affects women, in my head, I usually amend that to say just that women. And Justin. Also, Willy Wonka shattered the glass ceiling with the Wonka Vader. I saw yep. it. Sorry, ladies. He destroyed Sorry. sexism forever. Don't He's try to pretend like he did. He destroyed sexism forever. He and Charlie destroyed. Dist- dist- I don't know why naming another white man as his successor shattered the glass ceiling, but I saw it in yeah. all of its Technicolor glory. Um, I think he just replaced the glass ceiling with a glass elevator, which is basically a little glass prison, which is arguably much, much worse. Explosive dunks. Mm-hmm. Oh, guys. I had some bad old chili last night. I got explosive dunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all raw down there. I think the pro- it's not about your size. It's about it's not about the it's not about the the player and the pain. It's about the heart in the player. And you're on some Michael secret stuff shit right now. I want to give this person practical explosive dunk advice. So an explosive dunk, Look. an explosive dunk. I think you would define going from like zero on the floor. Not even you don't even have the basketball in your hands to like up in the fucking paint hoop. Um, from like how fast you can get up there and how scary you can be while you do it. That's a it's a it's an intimidation game. The explosive dunks. I'm I'm but sick I think of this. It's all a mental game, Griffin. That's what I'm saying. You you have to yell something out while you dunk, and the first couple times, maybe the first hundred times, you're gonna yell something, and then the dunk won't happen, and you'll look really foolish. But but. 
on the 101 time when you yell like, Dunkums, and you do it, and you nail it, everyone's gonna be like, damn. Damn, Dunkums, Damn, indeed. Daniel. I, see, I'm not interested in yelling something when I'm on the court going for a sick dunk. Um, when I go for a nasty dunk, and uh-huh. I do, when I go for a nasty dunk, what I what I want to be remembered for by my fellow players, I don't want to be remembered for my dunking ability. I want to be remembered for my kind and generous heart. So Aww. before I go for a dunk, I normally say something quietly so that only my fellow players can hear me, but in a conciliatory, like, uh, considerate thing to say before a dunk. So like, if I'm going up off the paint, yeah. Elevator, Woo. magic, magic man. Yeah, uh-huh. uh huh. To go for two, the sickest two. I look at another player and I'll say something like, um, "Next time it'll be you." And then I'll go for That's it. You know nice. what I mean? Or like, or like nothing personal. And then I'll take it, take it down there. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, you have a lovely family. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, your shoes are untied, but only if their shoes. I can't say this stuff. Are untied because you don't. It's not a. It's not a prank. Okay, we're not on salute your shorts here. Yeah, we're we're trying to play basketball. What if you, gentlemen? What if you every time you dunk, apologize to everybody on the team? Because like I think if if I ever joined a basketball out outfit, um, and I saw one of my my co dunkers get a dunk instead of me, I'd be like, oh, I wish I was the one. I wish I was the one getting uh, up in the paint and dunking. So, like, what if every time you dunk, you'd be like, I know you guys wishes you, but it's me this time, and next time, maybe I'll, maybe the next time will be you. You know what I found helps with that, Griffin? Huh. If I'm running up to take it downtown, like, if I'm about to, like, nasty dunk. Yeah. As I'm passing one of my fellow players, I'll say, like, boost me, boost me, boost me. So, they'll, like, gra- get a hand on me and kind of, like, help lift oh, me. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, when I do the dunk, like, they're not clear. In their head, they kind of feel like, I don't know if you would have made it. By himself, I would have. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, like, I feel like they, that that gets them involved. You know, it's like fun for them. That's like, too. That's like I, Michael Jordan did that to keep his re- relationship good with Larry Bird. Because Larry Bird's a very jealous man. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Um, and, like, every dunk that anybody gets, even in the games he doesn't play, every time he, he can't even watch basketball on TV anymore because he sees all these dunks happening. He's like, that should have been mine. And it's like, you don't even play for the Charlotte Hornets. Um, you could also act as though you're acting on, uh, you could shout them out as you're going for the dunk. So sort of like, as you're going up in the air, you're just like, Vladi Divac taught me how to do this. Yeah. And then Vladi Divac's like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the credit. Thank you. I think you, every time you dunk, because I've never done it, and I imagine it's like the hardest, it's the hardest thing in the world, right? Dunking, it's the hardest, it's the hardest feat in sports. A lot of people say pitching perfect game. Why don't you game. get bonus points for dunking? Exactly, yeah. It's it's worth a paltry amount of points, but it's the thing everybody goes to the shit for the shit. Um, uh, I think you should get points for fighting in hockey too, but that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Uh, I think every time you dunk, you should be able to give an Oscars style acceptance speech immediately afterwards. Like immediately, just pause the game for like, it doesn't have to be very long, like 20 seconds. And just be like, right. for this dunk, I just want to say um, huge ups to the Space Jam soundtrack. Um, mm-hmm. Spent a lot of hard days uh, on the on the the old as- in the old asphalt jungle, uh, learning the ropes to the songs from R. Kelly. And oh, it's over! All right, back into the regulation time. I think the L- Larry, I that- know you're watching this one. Larry, I know you. you're watching. Just fucking cool it, dude. I stop calling my house at stop night. Stop with the tweets. Travis is getting exhausted. I think I think what the problem with that rule they used to have that yeah you used you guys are too young to remember they used to have that but the problem is you had players who started telling very interesting stories in twenty second chunks yeah mm-hmm. so at the end of it they'd be like and if you want to hear how this one wraps up if you want to hear how I got out of <laughs> this scrape then you'll just have to let me dunk again <laughs> and they had a big problem with players like everybody back 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 back, back, back. I gotta hear I gotta hear this ends. Larry Bird get I gotta out know what this. happened to that chicken. Yeah, what, where, so where did the car end up? I um, think that when you dunk, not only should your team get two points, the other team should lose two points. Oh, uh, that's really good. That's because great. really, that's what a dunk signifies. Like, I am <laughs> dunking right. on you. What if... Like, not what, like I shot a basket yeah. and made it. Like, this dunk is to embarrass you. Yeah, what, what if dunking was like the golden snitch of basketball, uh-huh. and the first oh, team yeah. that does it gets 150 points... And the game's but, and, over. <laughs> and the game's immediately over. And to to sort of um to sort of make it 
a little bit harder to do. We're going to raise that hoop up like 10 more feet, huh? Let's get that hoop. And then everybody has to lift you up and everybody's dunking together. That's what I'm saying, bro. I'm talking about full blown cheerleader pyramid to get. I bet. And but see, then you start getting folks like, I mean, Dikembe Mutombo doesn't need as many folks helping him up. You know what I mean? And so like Yao Yao Ming is finally like, you know, he's not the best shooter in the league, but I mean, he's going to he's the fucking Harry Potter of snitch dunking. If you want to instantly improve basketball, start playing the game with a water balloon shaped like a basketball. Because what is that going to lead to? No dribbles, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Soft passes, absolutely. One dunk and the game's over. Yeah. And it's like such an explosive finish. Phil, that's oh, it. That's the end of the what game. What if it's a Gatorade balloon and then it's two birds, one stone? Yeah, exactly. Yep. You just put the coach <laughs> right under the basket <laughs> Both when you're the done. coaches have to stand under their baskets, too. That's key. That's fun. And maybe we could. Maybe it could be like a fundraiser. Or a fundraiser. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be that, for sure. <laughs> There's a dog park near my work, and sometimes I go there to eat lunch. I don't even ask to pet the puppies. I just sit on a bench and eat a sandwich and watch the dogs play, and then I leave when I'm done. I feel like this is totally normal, or at least not creepy behavior, but the other day, a dude got all up in my face about it. He said if I didn't have a dog with me, I shouldn't be there. I got flustered and left, but now I can't help but wonder, was he the asshole, or am I unknowingly creeping out the puppies? That's from Puppy Peepin' in Provo. He is the asshole. <laughs> no, no puppy. He's not. Nope. No, no, no. The the person yelling at him. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Qu- real quick sidebar. Um, Anthony on Twitter tweeted that Scott Bakula is decent at best, and I responded, "Don't be a moron." First one down, <laughs> and I feel I, I'm like fucking trembling right now. Like I feel seventeen high. minutes. No one's tweeted about Carrie Always. <laughs> okay, we'll get him. Um, we'll get him. We'll get him. We'll bring him in. I still haven't picked one. Yeah, it's fun, man. I'm like, oh fuck! I'm like fucking hopped up right now. I'm feeling punchy. Um, this is. I, uh, I did a Google search for the nicest celebrities because I want to. I want to. Yeah, I want to be worth it. You yeah, know what I sure. mean? Like, I want Ooh. to be. Justin, can I pitch one for you? Yeah, sure. Steve Buscemi. Yeah, is he active on Twitter though? It seems like he would have better things to do. But no, no, no that's going to be a rough one because, like, I feel like Steve Buscemi falls into this weird category of just like everybody feels like, oh, it's okay to make fun of how he. Lo- oh, Steve Buscemi, it's totally fine to make sure make fun of how he looks. That's okay. That's like cool. We can meme that. Right. That's easy. It's not. A, guess what? When you make fun of Steve Funny, Steve Funny, see, even I'm in it. I'm I'm oh. too deep in. Even when you make fun of Steve Buscemi's ex- appearance, that's not a meme. That's a mean. So just think about what you say. Just like think about how your words would affect him. Uh, what about Keanu Reeves? How is See, that like I think guys? he. Ne- I think he- that would be a busy job for you, but I think he needs the most defending. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like he might need some help. I think he'd really appreciate it above all else, but like in a really chill way. Like I thank you. Like oh, he's a I chill. He's a chill bro. That. Um, this is. A, th- I can't believe this has happened to you, and I want to apologize. I don't even own a dog. I'm not like a part of that community. I want to apologize on behalf of them because it's not a crime to look at some dogs. It's not like you're posted up outside of the, the, like the, the, where they, where the babies uh, like chill out after they get the baby park where they can go out and just like poop and run around and do whatever. Um, it's not like that. It's not like you're scoping out somebody's kids. You know what I mean? You're just looking at some dogs and dogs are there to be looked at. That's just it. That's just it. Especially if you're not bothering anyone. And you're not doing shit. Like it would be one thing if you're walking around the park, being like, "Oh, is that your dog? Nice, nice. How you doing?" No, I do creepy. But if you're just like sitting on a bench outside the fence, eating your sandwich. Now wait, but wait, you've just said it. What's on that sandwich? What's on the sandwich? Because if you be honest with yourself, if you're putting, if you're eating a sandwich full of things that dogs would just go fucking crazy for, like bagging the strips, um, uh, then BSLT. A BSLT, uh, then you know what you're doing. You know you just go to that dog park just to see who you can get riled up. And maybe you should maybe you should leave. Are you riling up the puppies? Are you sitting there like whispering through the fence like I I heard Princess Tickles saying some bullshit about you and you're trying to get like, you know, a, a, a kerfuffle going on in the dog park? Are you a dog park like dirt stirrer? Well, maybe don't do that. But if you're just gonna calmly sit there, maybe do a little Candy Crush on your phone, eat a sandwich, and in between Candy Crush levels, scope out the puppies. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, uh, I just remembered another person's joke, which I'd like to say on the podcast, which was from the hit website Steve Don't Eat It, uh, which is my, maybe my favorite website, and uh, 
Steve Don't Eat It once reviewed Began Strips, which they ate, and said that it tasted like the smoky puke of a thousand maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's good. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong to look at a dog. I really don't think there's anything wrong to look at a dog. Is, is it, if it, are they saying that you're some sort of like pervert for looking at a dog? If that's the case, I've seen every Air Bud movie. Does that make me a pervert? Yeah, it does. It definitely, definitely does. It definitely, definitely does. Um, I have a few names I want to float by you guys. Okay. Just like celebs that have been rattling around my head. Okay. Uh, Tom Cavanaugh. Ooh. How does that, how does that, that's a good pick, right? I'm a big fan. I, I I'm a big fan Tom, of Tom. I, but like, I feel like Tom is like, I feel like there's a chance that in my, I, I don't want to be somebody who I think I'll meet. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly, I feel exactly. like there's also, a chance I, really I feel like Tom Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh can really hold his own too. You know yeah, Tom I mean? Cavanaugh doesn't really need you. Okay, I've let me listen to this. Mike and Tom eat snacks, and I that's, that's, an, that's another thing. I don't think we should do a podcaster because that's fucking. Okay, weird. let me get, hit you with this. I'm 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 pretty into this one. I'm kind of this one's been rattling around. What about Joshua Jackson? Ooh. Now that's someone I could really sink my teeth into. <laughs> now, now Joshua Jackson, I could get Joshy as I call it. Could I could get into? I'm currently deciding between. It's gonna be one of these two, either Joshua Jackson or Stephen Amell. Who? Stephen Amell. See, I don't. The Arrow. Oh, he's f- now. See, that's going to be busy for you because now he's all up in the WWE. Yeah, and and I like, feel like th- he's yeah. a little bit too new on the scene. Where yeah. I feel like a Joshua Jackson, you're going to get people. For example, I see uh, this guy on Twitter talking about how Carrie Elwes is so good in Pin- Princess Bride and the worst piece of shit in everything else. Oh boy, you did you those- tweet at him yet? Yes, I did. What'd you say? Um, I feel like I could have been meaner. I think I just said he, uh, because he also said, I talked to Carrie Elwes and he said he died after Princess Bride, so he's sorry, but it's hard to act as a rotting corpse. And I responded, um, he's alive and well and an amazing actor. Thank you very much. I think I probably could have been meaner. <laughs> Does it, I don't feel like anybody would say anything negative about Joshua Jackson, and that's why when they and that's why when they do get a lot of like keep swimming in Dawson's Creek and stay out of such and such. You don't think you get? But that do I? Thing? Okay, but here's the question: this and this is really actually very important. Do I keep a uh, a, a Twitter handle search for uh, Joshua Jackson? Of course, that's Van City Jacks. Or do I keep a Joshua Jackson coward's coward's column? You're going to have to do both. I've got both going right now. (laughs) Okay, that's good. I've got an at Carrie Elways, and I have just Carrie Elways subtweeting. Um, I'm ready to jump down anyone's throats. Travis also has a Carrie Elves with a V, just like if people Uh misspell it and they're trying to talk shit. And C A R R Y Elways and um, C A R. I've got. It's basically. It's a lot. I've had to get a second screen. Um, Um, I do want to say, Justin, Joshua Jackson. I don't think people are going to say a lot of mean things about him, and that's exactly why you need to defend him. Is because when they do say a mean thing about him, I don't think that he'll be. I just want to be active in this pursuit. I don't want to be a hollow thing like like everything else in my life. I lose interest. Kim. You know, can we acknowledge the fact that we have been recording now for about uh, 40 minutes ish? And in that time, in a 40 minute window in the universe, people have said mean shit about <laughs> Carrie Elwes and Scott Vagla. Yeah. I didn't expect that kind of turnaround on this goof that, uh, like, nope, yep, yep, yep. There were Trav, mean things unfortunately, totally, totally. I'm, I'm gonna have to take away your verified check mark because apparently you don't know fuck all about Twitter. Yeah. Um, just, let's, I was thinking, well, like, maybe once a day somebody would say something mean about Carrie Elways. I don't know that I've got the time. Yeah. Uh, oh, I got it. Pierce Brosnan. Solid. Sh- don't even. Boom goes to dynamite. Solid. Don't even say anything about Pierce Brosnan on Twitter. I solid. will come for you. Get nice. pierced. I like that because it, I, I think that Pierce Brosnan seems tough, but I think that he's probably a very sensitive soul that if you say, like, yeah, go sit in your invisible car, dumbass. And like he probably cries a little bit. Yeah, and he, I'm and gonna he should. Start. That's mean. People shouldn't say that. Uh, I'm gonna spend more time standing up for Pierce Brosnan. I'm not gonna follow him. It seems like I'm, oh I'm, fuck I'm no. Sure. There's no way on no, earth I'm following Scott Bakula. It's new NCIS. Fucking no way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, that's too close <laughs> to the heat. I don't follow Carrie Elways. Quit okay. saying, quit, <laughs> hey, quit saying my name rhymes with Dracula. Scott, I fucking get it, okay, dog? Uh, let's go to the money zone, please, God. Yeah, here we go. Get my, I'm, 
almost done. Let me. You guys go ahead and start. I just gotta get my Pierce Brosnan column like up and running. Yeah, yeah. Start the start the start the dragnet. Um, I'm gonna start talking about me undies, the best underwear that you can wear. Whether you're wearing a suit, whether you're wearing sweats, you spend 24 hours a day in your underwear. You the underwear that you wear down there all the time against your most precious materials. It's probably pretty boring. I mean, these wants to fix that. They want to make it exciting. They want to make it liven up your downtown situation, like a Mardi Gras or like Carnival. All these underwear is made out of uh, uh, sustainably sourced modal. And that's that's a fabric is twice as soft as cotton. Gang, I have like uh, seven or eight pairs of MeUndies now. And it's like I get excited to wear them. And pretty soon I'll I'll have replaced my whole collection with MeUndies. And then it's just going to be a nonstop just like cool breeze festival down there. I tell you what, the Meandies has become my metric for when it's time to like do laundry because it's like, oh, on my last pair of clean Meandies, it's laundry day. Got it. Yeah. Um, Meandies is dedicated to providing the world's most comfortable underwear. In this pursuit, I would say that they have already succeeded. If you don't love your first pair, they're free. No questions asked. Here, have your Ooh. money back. Um, there's dozens of styles and limited edition prints to help you make a statement with your underwear. Shipping is free in the U.S. and Canada, and you can save up to $8 a pair with the MeUndies subscription plan. You can get the subscription or a single pair, and you can get 20% off your first order if you go to MeUndies.com slash brother. That's MeUndies.com slash brother for 20% off your first order. Trust me on this. It feels so good. It feels so good. They have cool designs all the time. You can get matching underwear for you and a, a loved one. Travis and I wear matching underwear almost every day. We could text each other in the morning, like, which one are you going with? And Travis is like, the one with the different uh, boom boxes on it. And I'm like, hell yeah, son. I sent him a picture of my bear dick, and then I sent him a picture of my dick with the MeUndies on. And it, like, But like, if you flip back and forth between them real quick, it looks like a magic trick. Yeah, it looks like a magic guy painting. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to take a moment, if you guys are, are quite finished, to talk about Bowl and Branch. Uh, uh, we have been sleeping on Bowling Branch sheets here at our house for a couple months now, and I can't sleep without them. If I go out of town, I just lie awake, staring at the ceiling, just praying for daylight. Uh, and, and that's the way I've been ruined by Bowling Branch. They will let you try these sheets for 30 nights, and I promise you, you're gonna need just one. And if you don't love them, you can send them back. You have nothing to lose. It gets even better, though. You can go to bowlandbranch.com today for 20% off your entire order. Sheets, towels, blankets, duvet covers, everything, plus free shipping. Uh, that This is the only place that these are sold, so you're going to need to go to their website. And they are uh, uh, super comfortable sheeps with, uh, sheets, and they're sheeps also. They'll sell you sheeps, but that's, I wouldn't recommend it. You don't know how to care for them. Uh, but go to bowlandbranch.com today, and you get 20% off your entire order if you use the promo code my brother bowl b o l l and branch.com promo code my brother this is uh, sustainable responsible methods of sourcing and manufacturing and they end up with a uh, really comfortable sheets that you're going to love so one more time bowl b o l l and branch.com promo code my brother i would also like uh, to tell you a little bit about smash fiction the podcast you should listen you should subscribe Here's why. The Power Rangers vs. Godzilla. Gandalf vs. Dumbledore. Batman vs. Doctor Doom. The Smash Fiction Podcast settles the most important issues of the day. Who would win if different fictional characters clashed in battle of strengths or wits? Smash Fiction is a debate-style comedy podcast in which a rotating cast of nerds battle on behalf of their chosen characters and a single impartial judge decides who wins. I, I think that that sounds pretty damn good. Who would yeah. win in a fight? Pierce Brosnan, Carrie Always, or Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. I actually think um, it would be Pierce Brosnan. I started listening to this podcast, and I my first thought was, wow, this guy has a great voice. And then I thought, man, I'm learning a lot about architecture and design. And then I realized I'd been listening to 99% Invisible, and that was on me. That's my you fault. You goofed up. I goofed up. You blew so, it. I blew it, okay? I just didn't want to... I just want to... I just want to get that off my chest. Um, I have another message here. This one's for M. Huff, and it's from oh, a bunch of stuff. It's from Weed Mom, Fish Ass Lover, Cat Hustler, and One Lunch Man. Uh, and this this Motley. My what? Fish Ass Lover. What? Uh, nope. Uh, this Motley crew says, happy birthday to our favorite whiskey dad. We are so delighted to be friends with a wonderful owl aficionado like you, even if you can't help it with all these gosh darn 
a little rude language in here, ridiculous eggs. Whether it's uh, yelling about treats or thirsting hard over ruinous elves, you're our problematic fave, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Here's to many more years of nestling in the garbage together and wallowing in our filthy... Hey, let's look up that word before we just say it. <laughs> I think That's, it's a bistro. Uh, uh, occasionally shortened to fujopan or just a fujo, this word is a slang term for an extremely bad quality... Manga scanslation. And now I gotta fucking Google that one. <laughs> the art of turning a manga from of one language into a different language includes translation of the story and editing of the actual artwork. Scanslations are done by fans for the whole fan community. This seems okay. Go ahead and say it, Griffin. Wallowing in our filthy Fujo ways. If I just said something, like, I, uh, that's the most work I've ever done to make sure something's not racist. So please, like... If I so the next time we say something racist, please remember this and just like give us credit for this. But this we didn't this may it. have been racist. I whatever. Um, their birthday is uh, Saturday, Feb 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 Timber six. So uh, uh, they wanted this message around then. So like this message so far, I would say has been just a complete catastrophe, just a complete fiasco from fucking start to finish. I'm sorry, Imhoff. Imhoff, we did our best. I'm we literally sorry. did. As, that's the most effort I've ever done on this podcast before. Happy birthday, Whiskey Dad. And uh, g- just good luck. Good luck to me. I'm going to need my own fucking Scott Bakula Defender after this episode goes up. New to Maximum Fun, the Beef and Dairy Network podcast. The number one podcast for those involved or just interested in the production of beef animals and dairy herds. All sponsored by Grazex, the latest grass replacement pellet from Mitchell's. If it's not Mitchell's, get back in the truck. Find us at MaximumFun.org or on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. And if it's not clear, this is a comedy podcast. Beef out. Hey, how about another Yahoo ditto? Yeah, I got one here. Uh, And this one was sent in by Level 9000 Yadru Drew Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's by Yadru Answers user The Hooded One. Ooh. (laughs) Who says, I've got a secret. (laughs) Uh, The Hooded One uh, says, Where... Can you find lots of gold? I'm a man in my late 30s. I want to have a lot of treasure? Gold, Mm -hmm. jewels, rubies, diamonds. Where can I find this? I want to have my own Steve Zahn Sahara quest. I want to have my own national treasure, book of secrets. I want to have my own The Mummy 2. The Mummy gets gets back in there. The Mummy 2, still mummying. The Mummy 2, Too Many Mummies. <laughs> this is a good question, and I'll tell you why. Because where is treasure kept? In a treasure chest, Okay. Right? Okay. So, like, it's really a chicken and the egg thing. Oh. Because if you buy the chest first, and then you get some gold, like, just like a regular amount of gold that you would get, and then you dump in the chest, I bet it looks ridiculous, right? Yeah. You, it has to be at least three quarters full for it to even like merit having a chest full of treasure. How yeah. much treasure so, do you have to get before, like, you sit there and be like, I need to get a chest for this? I need to it. get a chest for this because the problem is, like, before that moment, what do you just have? Like a Kroger bag full of gold? Yeah, you've got a reusable like, shopping bag of gold. Do you think you start with a very, very small chest? Yeah. And you like, just or a, a, chest. a big chest is mostly full of balled up socks, but then there's some gold on top of it. <laughs> but they never dig deep in the in movies where treasure chests are on Earth to see it's just like USA Today's that have been crumbled. We up found, to we add found old Blackbeard Pirate Carruthers secret chest of goodies. Oh, sick. Look at all these gold nugs. This is uh, it's mostly socks in here. Here's a note. Yar, gotcha. Gotcha, <laughs> suckers. Please don't take the socks. I need those. I need these socks. You know, there was uh, 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 the reason they have to have real food in uh, commercials is that Chunky was trying to sell this new soup with lots of vegetables, but the vegetables kept sinking to the bottom. So they filled the bowl with marbles and then dumped the soup on top of it. To make it look uh, more veggie, that would be that would be chunky. Yeah, it was be very. very that chunky. actually sounds mad chunky and exceedingly crunchy. I would say. I learned that on ninety nine percent invisible, by the way. So in case you're well, but so then did somebody eat the marbles? Somebody no, Travis. They didn't put marbles in the fucking cans. 
You couldn't no, no, go no, down, no, but, but then why? W- but you you posed it as though they did that, and then there was some executive like, hey, 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 from now on, real food in the bowls. No, they, it's crazier than that. The federal government somehow unearthed their secret. Like, what kind of deep throat, marble mouth nonsense is like? Somebody's like, listen, you need to dig deeper, dig below, <laughs> the, dig <laughs> below the carrots. To see if they're get an X-ray camera and run it over the commercial and see if you spy any marvels. You gotta jump into the screen like Poltergeist. (laughs) I've always felt that like this question makes me think of how much video games lied to me about how this scenario works as an adult of like walking around and like smashing a pot or like opening a box and finding money. No rupees. How much better the world would be if that happened? Except that like there's somebody on the other end of that. Yeah. let me hit you guys with this scenario. You take a, a baseball bat and a slingshot for the for the jugs and vases that they have up on shelves that you can't reach normally, and you want to uh-huh. blast them like that. I think if you took those two pieces of gear and basically were allowed, you were given 10 minutes to just supermarket sweep fucking guys' grocery games the whole space. If you do that shit up in Glenn Beck's house, Because you know, if there's one motherfucker on this earth that wants to leave behind a legacy of a pirate horde, it's that fool that's like, sell me your gold. I'm good for it. Why do you need all that gold, Glenn Beck? I'll tell you why. Because you want to be the new pirate king. That's what's up. If you go up in his house and you do smash open a jug, it's like, oh, no, you found it. Like a hundred golden coins comes out. I'm saying when the when that dude dies or or just yeah. retires from the the from television and radio, um, he's gonna be like, I know I've been kind of an abrasive figure, but <laughs> somewhat polarizing. But anyway, I'm about to kick off my own rat race, and then he drops <laughs> a full blown bats, a full I blown. I hate all rat. my stuff so oh, much. You know it's not in his house. His house will include the first piece of the map. You know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're gonna need to like look behind a portrait of him. Fuck that! No, oh my god, you guys, look at every chalkboard doodle he's ever done on his crazy show. <laughs> and there's, if you look up in the top left corner, there's a little bit of the map every time. Every time. It's you all so obvious tapes. now. It's all been waiting there for Pirate you. Pirate King Beck, yar, it's me, Obama's a Muslim, yar, <laughs> yar. You crack open a chest and it's like, fuck yeah, there's full of gold coins. You dig in a little bit deeper, and it's full of also some socks and a note that says, everyone forgets about the Hussein in the middle of Barack Obama's name, but I think it's important. Anyway, congratulations. Enjoy this $150 and socks. I feel like the video would talk about how it's all leading you to the greatest treasure imaginable. When you open the last chest, it's just a note that has the word freedom written in block yeah. letters. It's like, ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. He's right, though. Is he right? He's not right. No, he, he's not right. What if you open the chest and it had a million dollars in it or, like, a lot of money in it, but all in pennies? Oh, So, man, like, it was really full, <laughs> but, like, it's pennies. Yeah, for sure, Trap. What if Sahara ended and Steve Zahn and McConaughey and I forget who else was in that picture finds the think maybe a beck and sale finds the old sunken plane full of treasure and it's like, fuck yeah, guys, we won, we beat all the pirates and we did it. And they crack it open and it's seven hundred thousand pounds of pennies. It's like, well, let's just go home. Cause like we're in the <laughs> desert. Never never mind. <laughs> I'm not carrying this out. The amount of money it would cost to get these pennies from one place to the other would cost more than the pennies themselves. You got us again, Glenn Beck. Damn you, Pirate King. God, classic Glenn. Do you think there's a piece of the map in Glenn Beck's body? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, maybe, like the blue like lady a, from like Fifth a, Element? Like a Horcrux kind of thing? I was imagining more like um, uh, Cheech Marin in, I think, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. You pop out that eye, that fake eye. What is that back there? It it could also be the tattooed um uh top of the dude's head. Holy in, uh, shit! Oh, oh, don't say it. Oh, what is it? Oh, you, Cutthroat Island. Oh, whew. it could also be tattooed all over his body like Blind Spot. Yeah, you always see Glenn Beck. He's got a tightly buttoned up shirt, and his pants are always on. You never see Glenn Beck without his pants on. And and that and apparently that I'm the only person that is weird too. Because if you took those pants off, Blind Spot treasure map. I've never seen Blind Spot except when John Hodgson was on it. Um, but 
I think it's about one with a treasure map on her body. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Which is also like Prison Break, right? Oh, God. All these the shows are shot connected. Of, the last shot of the first episode of Prison Break is a young man, I believe Wentworth Miller, taking off his shirt to reveal that he has tattooed a map of the prison on himself. And that's why I said, well, I won't be watching this <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, anymore. thanks, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for having me. This has been a lot of fun. But I think I'm going to go ahead and hop off here before this train really gets moving. I think I can still walk back to the station. I would here, love if, so if that, that scene happened and you revealed the map and one of the other prisoners was like, fuck, do you think the problem was we didn't know how to get around the place? <laughs> like, we know where those <laughs> rooms are. We've been in here for 20 years. They give this to you in a brochure when you come in. Are you like, fucking kidding me? Help. It's on the wall. Do you think they refer to that frequently during the escape attempt? Like, hey, I'm lost. Wentworth, <laughs> take off your shirt so I can stare at your belly. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me where the broom closet is. So we're behind your nipples right now, I guess. Or what are your nipples? And we gotta get to your other nipple. We just have to get to this hole. That's my belly button. Fuck, that was what the Fuck. whole plan hinged around. That's our escape hole. Into your tum tum. Damn it. I think I think we took a left here. Uh, and then we took a right at this R crumb drawing that says keep on trucking. It's like, no, actually that was okay, that one was on there before. That's not actually part of the map. I should have I should have clarified. I kind of worked around that. Um just real quick, I, I think we're probably winding down and um it seems like we're on the, the sort of the slow sun setting of Yahoo Answers. As it, so I, it, it, it's if it were up to me, we'd do it forever. But I feel like Yahoo Answers is like you're going to wake up one morning and it's just as quickly as Travis was verified. Yahoo Answers is just going to be obliterated. Um, so like I want to like celebrate the good times while we still have them. And Brooks Oglesby sent in this Yahoo uh, it was asked by an anonymous user, which kind of defeats the the point of it. Um, but this this anonymous user says. I'm sorry for trolling? And then confesses, I posted the diarrhea questions online, and I realize now it might have annoyed some people. I won't do it anymore. I'm really sorry. <laughs> we talk, I mean, we that's the thing. Like, we harp on people for saying some stuff on Yahoo Answers, and I feel like when somebody is a bigger person and tries to get back in our good graces and like accepts and acknowledges what they've done, I feel like maybe we should recognize that as well. Uh, you're right, Griffin. Not enough people make amends sort of online, you know? I just don't want to yeah. paint everybody on Yahoo Answers with the same uh, big dumb brush. I posted the diarrhea questions on Like, they're owning it. They own it. I, is I, the diarrhea it, it, questions capitalized like the white, like, is it like, like the, the Panama, Like the question? Panama Papers? Yeah. Like the gushy tapes? Yeah. Is this uh, a thing that everyone, like, when you say the diarrhea questions, you don't have to say, like, which one? Because it's not some, di it's the diarrhea It's questions. the diarrhea questions. I'm really sorry, though. I f listen, uh, on if this person's listening, I pardon you. You're pardoned. I feel like the three of us would be the ones to do that. I feel like we yeah. would have the legal ability to pardon people on Yahoo Answers. I hope that we get a fucking email from from Marissa or Melissa, the owner of Yahoo, just like giving us like a one week heads up. Like, hey, boys, I know how important this product is to you. Just wanted to give you a one week head up to like record all your Yahoos for stockpile them, like take shelter and stockpile Screen, your shit. Screenshot the shit out of it and then build yeah. a house out of those screenshots. I kind of feel like our our regulars need to start like field stripping, like conserving them. You know, like they need to start like have a bunker uh, full of yahoos, just pickled yahoos. Like, yeah, yeah, they can keep stored. Um, listen, folks, that's gonna do it for us on our uh 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 p podcast. My brother, my brother, and me. This one, the one the you're one, the three hundred three hundred one, three hundred one. Uh, thanks for listening. Um. We have a lot of uh, fun stuff coming up. Uh, we have a couple live shows that we can't announce yet, but they're soon. You, when are we going to announce them? Like next week? I think next week. That sounds uh, a boot right. Yeah. That's we're, not we're a we're subtle hint. We're not going to Canada. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, we can, can we say we can say where we're going, right? No. But it's well, good. You're gonna love it. We can't say good. we can't say where we're Chicago. In. We're not doing Chicago. Sorry, we're not Chicago. going Chicago. No, we're not going there. Uh, we we we. Uh, but we're gonna announce a, it'll be two cities, big shows. It's gonna be a lot of fun. But it's gonna be like a quick turnaround. So just be be ready for that. 
Um, we want to say thanks again to MeUndies, who are dedicated to providing the world's most comfortable underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash MyBrother for free shipping and 20% of your first order. I want to say thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, Is a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a fantastic album, and um, uh, we, I really like it. We all really like it. It's a fantastic band. Do we congratulate our friend Lynn for winning the Pulitzer Prize? Because I just want to say that if we haven't. Oh already. yeah, he did that. Yeah, yeah. He no, he did it. We didn't. We really didn't do shit about it. Well, if you do, oh by the way, yeah, by the book, by the Hamilton, as as is, is commonly referred to in the vernacular, the Hamilton book. It's like back ordered on Amazon because it's the number one best selling book ever on the planet or something. Yeah, but like we're in it, so you can check it out. There's a page where they mention us. Uh, I so do want to worth reading. I do want to say like a legit thanks to anyone who like supported the efforts to get me verified on Twitter. I have no idea what ended up pushing it over the line, but everybody was really um, on board with it and gave me a lot of wonderful uh, congratulations when it did happen. Uh, when it did happen? Whatever. Um, and thank you for that, and I really appreciate it. And I also want to say, sincerely, everybody should go watch Gallivant and then tell ABC Jesus, to Jesus, all right, it. no, stop. I'll be so sad yeah, if we yeah, don't get yeah, a third yeah, season. Yeah, uh, go listen to those shows on the Maximum Fun Network. Go to MaximumFun.org and just fucking click anywhere and start listening to shows like Getting Curious and Throwing Shade and Stop Podcasting Yourself and Bullseye and Jordan Jesse Go and Judge John Hodgman. We have other shows. Uh, you can find them all at McElroyShows.com. Is it a dot com? Did we secure yeah, that? Yeah, it's a dot com. Nice. Uh, we do a bunch of other shows. Shows like The Adventure Zone, our D&D podcast, or Sawbones, Medical History Show, or Schmanners, or Intero Bank, or Rose Buddies, or Cool Games Inc. Bunch of different shows. You can find them all at macroshows.com. Scope it. Okay, we're done. Griffin, do you have a file Yahoo? I got a couple, and I've been looking. They're both really, really good. Uh, House Pink One. Okay. You can't be burning through them like you did last you're right, week. You're right, you're right, you're right. This is like right. a finite thing. Uh, Aaron Keese th- sent this one. Thanks, Aaron. It's by Yahoo Answers user. They're anonymous, but they did ask this important query. Can I still vape when I have walking pneumonia? <laughs> Gotta have my vape. My name's Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. The three of you enter a cave of a big red dragon and is standing over a hoard of precious golden rubies. And he says, what do you do, adventurers? I'm a dragon man. I cast fire on him. It's very good. I address the red dragon and say, us, we're the hosts of The Adventure Zone, a podcast about family playing Dungeons and Dragons. Very good synergy. Commit to the bit. I, I, <laughs> I roll to charm new listeners. It is very effective <laughs> against all odds. Everybody, we're the Macroys. We host the Adventure Zones, a podcast where we play Dungeons and Dragons together. It's a comedy podcast. We don't take the rules too seriously because there's a lot of them and we did not take the time to learn them. Maybe listen to us. We come out every other Thursday on the Maximum Fun Network. You can find us on iTunes or on MaximumFun.org. I think this promo is a critical hit. <laughs> 